Happy Finish Friday, everybody. Um, thank you again so much. I've had so many sweet notes and emails and um, just messages about how much they're enjoying this Finish Friday. I enjoy this Finish Friday because um, if you don't know me by now, I'm a teacher at heart. While I have a product line of, of a lot of different products, I love teaching you and I love raising your level of your connoisseurship of finishes up several levels. So today is gonna to blow you away. I know somebody had made a, a post on Facebook and they said, okay, but we already went over gilding last week. We showed you a little bit of gilding, but now get ready to have your mind blown with gilding. It's endless and it is such a great way of adding a little glam, a little spark, but also some detail um, and I'm going to take you more into an artistic element of gilding and how to be able to age copper. This is some that we just gilded, and I'm going to show you how to be able to age it and make it look vertigree like this. But let's take a glance over here. I've got a chest with a lot of pieces on it that I've gilded. Come over here with me for just a minute. So when you think about gilding, one of the things that you need to realize is that it can go on any surface as long as you put the size there, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But look at these champagne flutes that we did and that we used just a little bit of the copper leaf. I literally dipped a pencil eraser into the size, which is our, our glue for the leaf, and just placed it around that glass, I allow it to come to tack um, or to dry for about 10 minutes and then lay the leaf down and clean it off. Look at that. Look how I just did that edge on there too. So you can use leaf, gold leaf, silver leaf, copper leaf on glass. This was using one of my adhesive stencils. This was just creating a border around this tray. This was literally done on a plate that I got at Goodwill. So that way we gilded the edge. Here's another thing I wanna point out to you. Look at this torchere over here. It's done in silver, but see how it's aged. That's something that I'm gonna to talk to you today about aging the leaf. We don't want it to be too stark. We're gonna to need to be able to distress it, to age it and give it a patina. Now. Soon as I said that, I do want to show you a difference. Look at this little stool that, that I have, that I did do it in the, um, the Amy Howard at Home lacquer, which has a beautiful sheen to it, and I used some painter's tape and got a really beautiful straight edge, and I gilded it in gold, and I came back and used our Bright Idea lacquer on top of it to make it sealed and really beautiful and shiny. You can also use the leaf on top of books, where this was just kind of a random um, addition of adding some leaf on the sides of these books. Painting books is really a trend right now, too. Look at the hardware again. You know, we talked about last week, when you rescue and restore an old piece of furniture, don't forget, you don't have to paint the handles, gild the handles. So remember, if you like this while we're watching, it makes our rankings go up. Send me some love. This is uh, live on Friday at Central Standard Time, 12 noon. So if you're watching and you have a question, please ask a question. And then I've got two people here, one doing Instagram and one doing Facebook. They're gonna ask me so I can answer them live. All right, so if you don't know how to gild, you can go back on last week's Facebook Live because you're gonna need two products. One, when you gild, you're always gonna need this gilding size. Size, S-I-Z-E, -E, basically it's another word for glue, but because you have to have this special material, you cannot use glue, you have to use gilding size. Um, so it comes in a white, cloudy kind of white finish. It dries um, clear, but that way it allows you to be able to see when you're using it, and I'll just show you. So that way, if you brush the size on, if you want to cover it entirely, 
You're just gonna brush the size on. You allow this to come to what we call tack, T-A-C-K, for about 10 minutes. Then it's ready to put the leaf on. Now, here's the mistake a lot of people make. They don't allow the, the size to come to tack or to that drying point because if it's still wet or kind of gooey, the leaf will not go down pretty and it will never dry. You've got to make sure that this will kind of pull the skin on your ring finger. Usually if I'm testing it, it should pull it just a little. That means it's come to tack and you're ready to gild. So I have a lot more videos that you can go back on YouTube that you can go over the actual gilding process. But today I want to go into some fun stuff. I want to be able to show you how you can antique, especially even copper. So we've got three different leaves here. Let's look at these. So I wanted to lay them out. Remember the leaf comes in sheets. They all come in this size. I've actually just cut this one down. So you've got copper leaf. You've got silver leaf and you've got gold leaf. This allows you to be able to see the colors. So certain pieces of furniture, you're gonna to wanna to be able to use different colors. So you'll notice with this gray, how we went with gold. Gold is very complimentary with gray. Silver can be too. As a rule, you don't wanna use copper with gray. It's not as attractive. Um, there can be some um, instances that you could say would be an exception, maybe if it was a little bit darker. So, this is a piece of trim that I've gilded in this copper. All I did was I came back and, um, and I laid down the sides all over the entire piece and then laid the sheets down and burnished it in and then the entire piece was covered. Now, but what I wanna go over with you today is how to be able to antique this. This is kind of garish. Um, you can use waxes. We do have a light and an, a dark wax, but I wanna show you something that's even more fun than that. Yes, there's a question. We have a question from Riley Jane. Okay. When gilding hardware that will be used often, does it need to be sealed with anything? If it's going to be, Riley, it's, if it's going to be used a lot, I would probably seal it. So you can come back, like on this particular piece here, I used the Bright Idea lacquer. We have a lacquer that is a nitrocellulose lacquer. It's a high sheen, it's easy to use, it's an aerosol, and you could just pop a little bit of that on top of um, your leaf and you're good to go. Love that question. Are there any questions on Facebook? No? Okay, send me some love, guys. I wanna know that you like the fact that I take this time every Friday at noon um, to be able to turn around and teach you how to be able to do all these techniques to rescue and restore your furniture. Remember, we throw away 28 million tons of furniture every year in the United States. So I want everybody going out this afternoon, tomorrow and Sunday and going to your antique malls and your garage sales and getting these pieces of furniture um, and rescuing and restoring them and then make sure you enjoy the bragging rights of it. So. We do have a before and after group, if you're not familiar with it, um, with Amy Howard at home, you can join that before and after group. We've got um, a couple of thousand people in it and we share projects and what they're doing and you ask each other questions. It's a great way to be inspired um, and learn from it as well. All right, so this was gilded with our copper leaf. Now, I'm gonna show you a little trick. I don't know that I've ever shown anybody how to do this. And we used this when I manufactured furniture. So. I am taking a product that we have called Antiquing Mirror Solution. Um, it's an Amy Howard at Home product and it is the second portion of the Antiquing Mirror process, but all you need is the solution. Make sure that you shake it up really good. And what I did is I put it in one of these little squirt bottles. They're like a mister, so it's a very fine mist. You don't wanna go with a bottle that's a lot heavier um, because I don't want it to come out too much at one time. All right, so are we ready? Let me show you this. It's so fun. Now, this has dried. Um, we laid the leaf down. I buffed it off just a little bit. And so it's dried for probably about at least 45 minutes to an hour. The longer you allow the leaf to dry, the better. So it's really, um, it's adhering to it. Now, so I'm gonna shake this up a little bit. We will have a tendency to settle. And again, um, I'm using the Antique Mirror Solution. And I'm just gonna mist it. Look about how far I'll get and I'm gonna mist it like this. And what it's gonna to start to do, it's gonna to start to oxidize. Can you see that? Can you see it? 
Let me hold this up. Can you see how it's starting to oxidize? Look at that. It's, it's like it's growing. But it is an oxidation process that looks real. It, it doesn't look contrived. Now, let me spray just a little bit more. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't have a very nice smell. But it does the job. It's beautiful. Look at this. So I don't want to overdo it, depending on how much you want to age it. Are there any questions? Are you loving this, guys? So depending on how much darker I want it, I can just add a little bit more. Back off from it now. So it doesn't take much at all. And that's going to antique it and age it almost instantly. The other thing is you can thin it with just a little bit of water if you don't want it to be too, too thick. Now, look at this lower right-hand section. Can you see that? How I created kind of a vertigree look where it's got the green in there like it would have been copper that would have turned. So what I did, you can come back, just keep looking at that, you can come back if you want and you can take some um, chalk base paint and you can come down in the crevices. You don't want to do it everywhere. You can do it a little bit with a dry brush or you can use your fingers like this. Basically, you just want to be able to get a little bit in the details. What happens if they spray too much? Well, if you spray too much... Can you use a cloth and wipe it off? Not really. You can model it just a little bit, so it's good to kind of test it. I always will um, test on something that's not my piece of furniture. That's why I'll use pieces of trim like this um, to be able to see what color about what I want it to look like. See how I'm just rubbing a little bit of that in the crevices? Not much, just where there's a little bit of um, ex maybe accenting that there might be some vertigree where that copper would have turned. You can come back too with some 4 aught steel wool and pull some of the brightness of that copper back. Not too much because it literally is changing it um, in the color. So there again, if you're just tuning in, we took our antiquing mirror solution and I took a little bit of it in a mister and I'm showing how you can spray that copper that we gilded and age it. If you want it to be a little bit lighter, add some water. Maybe use half of the mirror solution and half of the water and spray that on there because when you start working with oxidation and this process of using um, they're, they're a form of a chemical, um, but salt is a, is a chemical. A lot of people don't realize, but when you start to use that to allow this natural oxidation process to take place, you realize how cool and how simple um, it is to be able to make some really cool pieces of furniture. Awesome. Question? Yes. If I have just a touch of gelding on a painted piece, will the mirror solution damage the painted portion? No, and so what I would do, I probably wouldn't use a mister. Um, I would use um, like a natural uh, cotton batting. You can go to like a Hancock fabric. You can order some of it online. Um, and sometimes they have seeds in them. It's not a cotton ball, but it's a natural batting, cotton batting. And I would probably take half water and half of the solution, just dip that batting in there and dab that on your piece, and that will antique it. We used to, um, this is a different, a little bit different process. We used to have dining tables that I had in the Amy Howard collection, and we would do striping along the band of the edge of that top, and I would, we would antique that little bitty band, but it was so beautiful uh, when it was finished. Those little details like that on a piece of furniture, is your finger in the camera? <laughs> Those details of a little bitty um, stripe like that or accents can make a huge difference in your piece. All right, it just looks like your fingers on the on the camera. All right, so here's something else I want to be able to show you. This is so much fun. You know, gilding can take on a, a feeling of art. It can look like a piece of art. A lot of people will use gold leaf, silver leaf, um, copper leaf, even variegated copper leaf in their paintings when they're working on pieces. And I want to show you a little trick that can be a lot of fun. I've done this on the top of cocktail tables. 
um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be um, on a piece of art. But it's called shishimi, and it is an oriental lacquered finish um, that you can do with something as simple as a sink strainer. So Jean was sweet enough to go to the hardware store for me right before we started and got me this kitchen strainer. And the reason for this is because it's going to allow me to be able to create a really unusual or in a lacquer finish. So, this is just a piece of masonite board. Again, I want you to test on things. This is a masonite board that we painted with the one-step paint in black. And then we rolled on um, the size. So we rolled on with a foam roller. Just when you're working with size, I prefer you not brush on with a chip brush. Do not use a chip brush to brush size on because you'll get lines. You need to either use a foam brush, um, a foam roller, or maybe a sponge roller. I want you to make sure there's no grains and that it's completely solid. Now, so here's what's going to be kind of fun. I'm going to take a little bit of the leaf. Now remember the leaf, come, there's 25 pages in a pack. It comes like this and it's gonna be a complete book. This is gonna be the size of it, I cut this down. Um, but I'm gonna take one of these sheets and I'm gonna put it in this strainer. It's almost like a magic show. And I'm gonna take, now I'm using my chip brush. This isn't applying size, but I'm gonna use this chip brush because it's going to allow me to be able to get this down into um, the surface. Now, remember I rolled on the size, we brushed this on, so I've, I'm feeling of it where I've still got tack. And I'm gonna grind this. Can you see how it's gonna create these little flakes? I'm gonna move it around. This is so fun! Look at this. Isn't that cool? Look how I'm constantly moving my strainer around. I hope I'm gonna have some budding artist that it's like, I think I wanna be able to do some things like this. You can also create really cool looks on top of cocktail tables, especially if you like lacquering. You could use the black lacquer, a gray lacquer, red lacquer. Just put a coat of the size on because what's happening, the gold is going, or the copper, the silver, is going to go down and be embedded in this. And I'm gonna show you in just a minute how to get it to attach. All right. Watch how you can also, here's another way, you can lay the leaf down and then kind of drag it and break it up. And you're working on a flat surface like this. Isn't that cool? I'm gonna take another piece. What do y'all think? Do you like this? It's Melinda so fun. Says, a great idea for leftover leaf. Yes. I love creating things like this. All right, so I'm gonna take just a little bit. Remember guys, this is just a regular uh, kitchen strainer that I am using, a drain like a, you'd normally put in a, um, in a drain to be able to protect it, I guess, where stuff doesn't go in there. Sink drain. Sink drain. And then I'm just putting in the sheet of that gold to be able to get all these yummy little dust particles everywhere. So I can continue to play with this. I can add some uh, detail to it. I can come in and maybe add a piece of art if you're a painter, but I do also use finishes like this. Maybe come in with a stencil and add some words on top of this would be really beautiful. Now, in order to make it adhere, you need to just come back with some wax paper, lay it on top of it, and then that way you do wanna make sure that you always burnish it. It's best not to burnish with your hands you want to always make sure you've got tissue or wax paper to be able to lay on top of that. Can you already see how cool this would be, how you can use it on furniture or art? All right, so and then I'll just take this up. I need this to dry. If I've got some loose particles, I just want to make sure that I get that the leaf off with these big pieces and then come back and then you do want to make sure that you seal it. I would recommend um, our Bright Idea Lacquer 
that way you can just spray that on. It's gonna give it a really beautiful, nice, even finish. So hopefully today was just kind of fun um, learning how to be able to age your copper, how to be able to antique things. Remember, if you're working with gold, you don't wanna necessarily leave it this bright gold. It's best to come back and put on the light and the dark wax just to be able to antique it. And remember, these two guys go together. We talk about the fact that they're married. You don't ever wanna use the dark wax by itself. You wanna use it in conjunction with your light wax. So whatever you want to um, antique that you've gilded, just make sure that you put on the light wax first. See already how that kind of will tone that down? You want that to come to tack. Question, will the antiquing solution work on the gold leaf? It will not. Um, it works beautiful on the copper and it will work on the silver, but you, you're you gonna have the best look with the copper, but it will not work on the gold. That's why I was showing you with this, that you wanna be able to come back and set that back. On hardware a lot of times, and let's just show everybody, let's just glance over at this little stool again. When you're working on things like this, you don't necessarily have to set them back, but if you don't want it to be too bright, um, if you don't want the gold to be real bright, then come back and wax it. So already, see it set that gold back just a little bit, and then you can come back with the dark wax. Remember, always use a second brush, always offload it. Then that way I can come back with a second brush and just tone that gold down with that dark wax so it's not quite as bright. Gives it a really pretty patina. Look at that. See, isn't that more yummy already? It's not too garish. We want it to really go pretty with your, um, with your painted finish. Love that. I love how y'all are sharing, how you're using what I'm teaching you, how you're using it on furniture. Um, and I'm in the process right now of working on um, a course, a finished course, where I'm gonna teach you kind of the ins and outs of building a business um, and being able to flip furniture because I did that for many, many years and I, I gained a great deal of satisfaction from it. So thank you. Oh, and we, ha we need to announce the winner. Thank you for reminding me. Brenda White. Congratulations, Brenda. You have won. For tuning in you have won the gilding size and some gold leaf that we're going to be sending out to you this week so congratulations and guys if you want to be a winner then you need to make sure that you register go to the link below on our um, instagram and our facebook that way sign up for next week when we'll be here with finish friday and we'll be going over a brand new skill that i'll be able to teach you have a great week everybody